players who come with the Radiance, as well as the team play that the Soul is going to bring. Good evening and welcome here to Maynard Jackson High School here in Atlanta, Georgia. The Raleigh Radiants come into town to take on your Atlanta Soul here in this home opener for the Atlanta Soul. Joined in the booth today with Miranda Knowles, Amada Kaliande. Should be an exciting contest here today, the home opener here for the Atlanta Soul. I'm so excited. This is a big game for both squads. The Raleigh Radiants coming off a home opener loss last weekend to DC Shadow and the soul coming off an away loss at the Austin Torch. This is a huge game for morale to get their seasons kick started for the defending champs and you know an upstart team like the soul trying to claw their way into the contention for a championship weekend. Yeah, so looking to do some home cooking here today. They're here in front of the home faithful. We saw last year just how important being, playing at home was for this team. I mean, there's a good crowd on hand. I was talking to Morgan Lally, one of their captains earlier today, and she's just excited for the new personnel here on the squad as well as just excited to be playing here at home. For sure. Yeah, it's always hard to go on an away trip in professional ultimate there's a lot of weird things that can happen on the road and so the soul are definitely looking to capitalize on that it is college sectionals weekend so both teams are going to be affected by that missing a few coaches um, and players at their sectional tournaments respectively and so we'll have to see how these 21 players on each of these teams stand up to the challenge yeah super excited for opening pull here in this one should be an exciting contest between both teams continuing that Georgia, North Carolina, Atlanta, Raleigh rivalry. Let's see what goes on here in this one. Right. You love to see it. There's so much good competition between these two states and cities in college, in youth, in pro, in club. And this is going to be a really good one uh, tonight between the Radiance and the Soul. So as we are awaiting just opening pool, we're probably about a couple of minutes away. 7.13, I believe opening pool will be 7.15 p.m. Make sure you stay tuned to this one. Should be an exciting contest between both sides. Should be a fun one in this one. First game between the both of us in the movie with the different roles here. I know. Excited it's so to exciting have you here. to work with Adekale. He's done so many good games commentating while I've been coaching. And I love being in the booth, but I'm usually out on the field, so mm -hmm. this is a nice transition for me in my ultimate career. So. Tonight it's it's a sunny and we'll you know the sun will go down it's sunny and like 75 degrees here it's kind of a perfect evening for mm -hmm. ultimate here in Atlanta kind of on the south side of the city in a, at a high school that has recently had a really great team there's they've got boys division and girls playing in the in the youth ultimate scene here in Atlanta so this is a really fun place to have this game this has been the Souls home field throughout their tenure. Um, we're going to play a couple games here and one over at Agnes Scott College this year. So it's really nice to have ultimate across the city here in Atlanta. So uh, as we're about to begin the opening pull, it looks like Atlanta Soul will be rocking those new home jerseys that debuted last year. Um, kind of a turquoise color. And then Raleigh Radiance in the whites with the very legible numbers. So excited for that here in the booth. I uh, can't tell you and stress enough how great it is to have legible numbers on your jerseys. And we got the opening pull there as we are set to begin. A nice inside backhand as they continue to work up the field. Raleigh making quick work, churning up yardage. And Miranda looking like Atlanta in a straight up matchup defense, person defense to begin this game. Yes, Atlanta last week showed really nice far away marks with a straight up force. And there we have Titcomb to number 45. Looks like that's Caitlin Gross. Caitlin Gross. So just like that, Raleigh opening us up one to zero early on in this one, making quick work there in their offense. Yeah, Titcomb is one of the players I've had the pleasure of working with on the U.S. Women's National Team this year already. Um, we're set to go play at 
Torneo Terna Primavera in Med Medellin, Colombia in a couple of weeks. Um, I get to coach her and her teammate Alex Barnett, who unfortunately has a hip injury and so is coaching out there tonight. Um, but Chena Titcomb is a stalwart, has played a lot of Ultimate in Seattle and is now taking her talents to Raleigh. It's great to have her in the region. Look for more assists from Titcom tonight. Now we get our first look at this O-line here, the Atlanta Soul. Let's see if they can answer and get one on the board as well and tie us up. You see the pull sent away. Atlanta looking to move the disc quickly down the field, having trouble, needing a reset. Able to find Donnie. Donnie, a couple of fakes up the field. A nice job of digging that one up. So far, nothing down the field here for Atlanta. Good downfield defense here from Raleigh. We see a pick called. So it's interesting, Atlanta Soul is piloting their new hex offense here where they actually intend to have a lot of side-to-side -side movement, especially here between the backs or traditionally called handlers. Sam Lee over to the far side, and that's what they're looking for. As they continue to move the disc around. Now a deep shot put up into space, the first one of the game, and it's reeled in there by Atlanta. As they continue to work it down the field, trying to get to this red zone area on this one, just out of the reach there. Quick turn after the big momentum play. That one just couldn't be handled there by Samantha Lee. Yeah, really nice movement by the Soul and a great early huck. That's something that they were going to try to open up in their offense tonight. Now we can see the Radiance now defensive O. An another deep shot put the other way with space, the over the shoulder grab. On the doorstep now is Raleigh looking for that first break of the game. A couple of fakes, not a cheeky backhand inside, still short of the end zone. Oh, a nice cut to free up, and a nice fortuitous bounce there for Raleigh as they get the break 2 0. Yeah, so Ginny Riedel cleaning up the trash there on that pass. Radiance looking com content to get some more touches around the end zone, wait for something good. Lots of inside passes, which is, you know, a little bit risky, but certainly part of every good offense. And heads up play by Riedel in the end zone. Now if you're head coach, Jack Clark here for Atlanta, you're telling your team, hey, we need to relax. We need to play our game. It's just the opening here, 2-0. You know, you're one catch away from tying this up 1-1. So you've, you know, just got to clean things up a little bit and play your game. Right. I think if you're a soul, you're pretty happy with that first offensive possession. You see a, a lot of good things. You see your hucks coming up. Um, love seeing Martha Wilbur out here. She was the one that put that first huck up. She was not able to play last weekend in Austin, so it'll be great to see her make an impact on the game tonight. Martha, another one of those Athena UGA players here on this roster for the Atlanta Soul that have been making big names for themselves here in the last two years. See some good movement here from Atlanta, really using the full width of the field. And so far, Atlanta not getting in high Stall counts, really working the disc around, and I think this is a part of that new offense you were talking about, Miranda. For sure. The first tenet of this and most strong offenses is hit the first open person, and, and they're doing that with a plum. That was a great effort to keep that disc alive there. Ellen Mayer with that catch. Looking to move it around. To so continue to work it up. It almost seems like <laughs> Raleigh is looking to pin them on a sideline and cause some, some traffic or confusion as we see some players collide there for Raleigh. Let's hope they're all right. 
Yeah, looks like contact resulting from a pick. As players clear space, they often leave their defenders in their wake, and there can be contact as the defenders try to follow the offense. The injured player looks to be Gina Titcom. Let's hope she is all right, Look, able to kind of get up under her own power, but may need an injury sub. 88, Maddie Plutsky also taking a sub. A hard hit, but hopefully both of them will be all right, and we'll see them later in the game. Yeah, I hate to see two players of their caliber go down like that, especially early on in this contest. Let's hope they are able to come back and make an impact on the game. So Tortorici and Lyman in for Pletsky and Titcom on the Radiance. And the players will tap it in when those injury subs have taken their spots. So if you're just tuning into this one, it is 2-0. The Raleigh Radiance up over the your Atlanta Soul. Here with 8-16 remaining here in the first quarter. Looks like there's some discussion about if there was a call during that play, if there was a foul or a pick. And players are discussing it with the observer. On that side, that's Enzo Cianelli, highly experienced observer and referee across many divisions of Ultimate. So we await the final decision here. If a call was made, disc would have to uh, go back, wouldn't it, Miranda, at that point? Yes. So, yeah, if the pick occurred before the throw was released, the the disc should go back to the thrower. I do all just, I, I want to note that on the screen, the clock is running, but it has stopped here in the stadium. So it is 8.16 time on the, on the clock. So even though it was running for a while on screen, we're going to go back to where the time was when the, when the call occurred. So it's 8.16 and running now. It looks like the disc will be back here with Meyer. An inside pass. This one just mishandled there. Looks like Joski not able to get it on a deep shot. Put up immediately and dug up. I believe that was Sue with the grab there for the Radiance. And now they're on the doorstep once again. And the shot put up into the end zone. Another break there for Raleigh. It's 3-0 early on in this one. So that looked like Baco to Baumgartner. The Discraft Ultra Star is the official disc of the Premier Ultimate League. Discraft, the world leader in disc sports. You can see here some of that confusion from perhaps again a new offense where people are used to cutting in a horizontal or a vertical style offense and two people cutting to the same place at the same time can create a drop or any kind of turnover, including that pick we saw, and Radiance really capitalizing on that going up 3-0. You know, in this one, so far it might be a result of a lot of these players having played with each other for much longer here on this Raleigh Radiance team. A lot more new and more fresh players here for the Atlanta Soul. Um, and, you know, having talked to Morgan Lally, they've had a couple of practices, and, of course, they played in the game against Austin. But, you know, still, you know, trying to fill each other out and really get the feel here of this side. Yeah, and nine new players on the Atlanta Soul this year. You see a quick turn, a nice run-through block there for Raleigh. And they're in prime position once again to get another break. You'd love to see Atlanta have a good defensive stop here, get the disc back, and go the other way. Yeah, big play for Atlanta right here. and Might get them some juice and really get them back in this contest. See the disc being moved around. Another backhand inside throw, and now an OI flick to the end zone for the score, 4-0 Raleigh. So that side-to-side -side motion that you see Radiance having to take, going with multiple passes all the way across the field, a few times. That is what the Soul is trying to do with this nice straight up force. Um, last weekend in Austin, it worked. Austin Torch had a hard time with a little bit more wind, pushing the disc wider and not able to connect with those 
uh, teammates in the end zone quite as much. Radiance here with a little bit calmer night and really solid offense is able to reel those in. Looked like that was Justine Neville there with the assist. A nice little OI flick to the corner of the front pylon. Um, you know, talking to their coaching staff, Raleigh in this one really just wanted to show people, hey, we're good at ultimate, but we also have fun playing ultimate, you know? <laughs> And so far in this one, Raleigh has been having fun in this one. They've been dominant. 4-0, only three straight breaks. Now we need an answer from Atlanta. Right. This must feel great to Raleigh. They did not score in the first quarter last week or the third quarter, so there's still hope for the soul. They got to get on the board, though, soon. So you see the pull, lots of hang time on this one, fielded in the middle. Atlanta looking to make something happen. And then a quick turn, a miscommunication there. And now Raleigh looking to run. Nice dig up with the left hand. Great to see Tick come back on the field after that injury sub. Now up into the end zone and caught there for the score. Another break there for Raleigh. Looks like Milestrup with the goal. There you go. Looks like he said, he said back us there with the score there for Raleigh, 5-0. And it just seems like in this one so far, it's not necessarily Raleigh beating Atlanta, more like Atlanta beating Atlanta up. I think they've three, four quick turns where they've kind of moved the disc well, side to side, moving it down the field, and then just one quick turnover and Raleigh's taking advantage. Totally. Raleigh's a highly skilled team. They have great handlers, especially able to use the width. Here you see Atlanta calling a timeout. I think that's a great call. There are two timeouts per half in PUL games. So definitely take one now to regroup, talk about what you're doing well, not, not dwell on the errors. That's going to happen. We're about halfway through the first quarter. Reset, get back to it. Yeah, I know, you know, the shout out, my. This live broadcast of the Premier Ultimate League is brought to you by Breakmark Ultimate Apparel. Go to breakmark.com to place your next custom team order or check out the PUL Athlete Collab Shops. So as I was saying, just a shout out, my coaches in college, they always talk about the game to three. Right now you're down five. And if you're Atlanta, you can't get everything back all at once. You gotta play a game to three. Got to get it one point at a time and really inch your way back into this one. Shout out to Robert Bradham and Corey Bradham on that one. But I think if Atlanta does that, they can get back into this contest. If they don't, it's going to get ugly really quickly. So, Yeah, they got to, you know, stop the bleeding here, get on the board, and then get their D-line out there and see what they can do. I love those games to three. I've had former athletes, especially Ava Arapale was someone who talked about the game to three, not just in ultimate, but in life. Mm -hmm. That like, if things aren't going your way, you gotta get back on the horse and try again, reset, and let's see if the soul can do that right here. So some new personnel there on the line for the soul, trying to work things around. Look like Morgan Lally now with the disc. Look for her to kind of be a staple, and they got an immediate deep shot down the field. And that's a rare sight right there. Having played with and against Morgan, it's usually really hard to <laughs> out throw her because she's that fast. But that one, just a little too much sauce on the disc. And now a turn, you go in the other way, Raleigh, another opportunity to get a break. I love that look from Naomi Anderson. I think it just needs to get warmed up and she'll get that next one. Great cut from Lally. They'll get that connection next time. So Raleigh now trying to work from their own end zone and a gift given back to Atlanta, an opportunity to score on the doorstep. Griner here with the disc. She's needing an outlet back around. Back to Griner and they're looking to work. And some confusion, I believe a pick was called down the field. Now that turn is so important for Atlanta. Them being able to send the disc deep and get the turnover close to the end zone and now they're in their end zone offense. This is the opportunity that they've absolutely needed all game. Griner weighing her options. Now step around back to Griner, towing the line, and that's the first one 
Here at home for the Atlanta Soul, they're on the board. 5-1 is your score currently. Love that around backhand from Maria Vargas. That was lovely. Watch this here. Griner does a great job getting rid of the disc quickly and then passing and moving. Another tenant of every good offense, but especially this hex offense. And Vargas steps around, stays nice and low under the mark for that around backhand. Miranda, that cut there by Griner was filthy. The little button hook action, fake going up line, spin around, left her defender just on an island. That's right, and the trust to be able to do that on the open side, make that move, to come around back to the break side. It's really good teammateship between those two players, Griner and Vargas. I can't wait to see that partnership develop this year and hopefully for many years to come. Griner coming to us from Florida, um, playing at UCF and now up at Kennesaw State. We're so glad to have her up here in Atlanta. Vargas coming from Mexico City, wanting to be the best ultimate player she can and coming here to see what she can do with the Atlanta Soul. It's so wonderful to have these transplant players coming to our city and making an impact. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. I mean. Griner was basically a walking highlight last year for the Atlanta Soul. I mean, making big plays left and right. Her and um, Aaron Schrader, um, who was on this roster before, just been making big plays. I'm really excited to see who kind of steps up and shows out this season here for the Atlanta Soul. So that might be the you know the little momentum builder for Atlanta to get back in this one. Now looking to play defense here against Raleigh. So I believe this is a delay of game call. You see that the pull did not go up. I think that Raleigh was not on their receiving end zone line quickly enough. And so they have to start with it 10 yards deep in their end zone as a, pen as a penalty. Quickly, Raleigh getting into their offensive set. Now back around, an inside flick, almost coming up with the D. Now immediate deep shot put down the field, racing towards the disc, able to dig it up. Inches away from the end zone now is Raleigh. Now a big around inside there for the score. Quick work there for Raleigh, punching it in. There is player Bidegar Curtis there for the score. Yeah, really lovely work. I, Raleigh was able to get out of their end zone very quickly, work it to one side, then to the other, use the length of the field with that nice huck down the field to back a smile strip, and then just nice work using the width again through Chena Titcomb to Bidigary Curtis. So what? Enjoying the live stream so far. Atlanta Soul's live streams are entirely self-produced. If you want to continue to see streams like this online for free, donate using Venmo or PayPal that you see on your screen. So once again, if you're just tuning into this one, 443 left in the first quarter. The Raleigh Radiance up 6-1 to one here over your Atlanta Soul. Ada Kaliande here with Miranda Knowles. So far, it's been an exciting game here in this one. Atlanta Soul really just trying to figure out their game here in this one so far. And Raleigh has kind of taken advantage, but Atlanta a little bit of momentum, a little bit of juice here after that last point. Now back around. Now a deep shot put up in the space, up in the air, just mistiming the jump. Griner two for two on scores here so far. Punching one on the board again. That's two for the Atlanta Soul. Yeah, then that's two goals for Mia Griner. A lovely deep forehand from Liv Ford into the end zone. And that look is exactly what that Hex offense wants to see. They talk about it looking a little bit more like soccer offense than traditional ultimate style offense where you get it from a mid to one of the wings on the side. And then you might see like this, a bit of a cross deep shot. So it went to the backhand side, but you see Liv Ford takes a forehand look that goes sort of across the field and it has to go up and over that defender. In this case, working right out for Mia Griner. So their offense is actually starting to click a bit and that is exciting. 
So just like you said, Miranda, I think the best part about that Hex offense, if you've a fan of other sports like soccer or lacrosse. It's fun to see the disc go across the full width of the field and then continue once you swing it across and the defense is kind of shifted, then you can make that cross field shot and it's opening up a lot of space for the deep cutters. Yeah, I imagine the soul coaches were very happy about that. No turnover offensive point and now they got their D line out there. Let's see what they can do. So Raleigh looking to answer a nice inside backhand as they continue to work it up the field. Carving yardage, now a deep backhand put up into space. Two soul jerseys there, and a layout will not be scooped up. Great defense from Atlanta. You love to see two defenders under a hanging huck like that. That time, I believe that's Vargas and Anderson underneath that D. Let's see how they're attacking offense can do after that D. Yeah, the counterattack squad looking to make something happen here. Their first real look at breaking this Raleigh offense. Naomi Anderson back around. That's a pretty backhand as they continue to work. I'm really liking the patience so far here from this counterattack squad. Yeah, you'd love to see that pass and move style. So, oh. Excellent bid, but just too far out in front. Throwing a bit of a difficult pass early in the count that's not quite necessary, but maybe they'll get it back and we'll get another shot at it. So Raleigh looking to get a hold once again here offensively. Just being moved around near sideline now. And I believe pick. a pick was called down the field. Yeah. Disc here with Tyler Smith. Pick, it means that the defender was not able to follow the path of the offensive player. They would have run into another offender or a defender or the observer, anything where the defender cannot follow that path as long as they're within 10 yards. A nice little give and go here on this near sideline. Raleigh electing to go backwards to keep possession alive. That means good downfield defense so far here from Atlanta. As they're working it down the far sideline, a shot's put up into the end zone. Caught with two hands there for the score. Looks like that is Bidigary Curtis there once again. And that's two goals for Bidigary Curtis and three assists for Chena Titcomb. The the Soul is playing this straight up offense, which as you said, Adekale, they're having to go side to side or even backwards, but with a strong thrower like Tickcomb or like Smith, as you saw as well, giving them that much space to wind up and having throws on both sides down the field is just a little bit dangerous. And here they exploit it to the nice tall receiver, bit of Gary Curtis. And I think the, the, the part that's kind of slept on there, especially about going backwards and back and forth and using the full width of the field, you're making that defense tired. They're gonna have to run back and forth and you know, when you've got elite receivers, elite cutters going down the field, it's hard to keep up with them for long points like that. For sure, and all of these sole players have probably played O points already because Raleigh went up by so many points that they were you know, trying everything in their bag. And so getting back on defense is really hard because everyone's got some fatigue going on already in the first quarter. So another look here at Atlanta's O-line. Griner back around. Blue Bears cash in here with the disc. Or excuse me, that's Galaxy Kruger with the disc. Looks like another pick. Disc will go space. back here to Alex. Kruger Look. with the disc, I think the only mom on the field, which makes me really happy. I think actually professional ultimate lends itself to parents being able to play quite a bit longer into their careers. So I'm really excited to see not only Galaxy, but lots of other parents playing in the PUL. As Sol continue to work it down, Gerald there to Galaxy. Now racing deep towards the end zone. This one is secured 
For the score, there is Hannah Abraham. Yeah, Popovich to Abraham. I like that. I, I think that is a really nice high skill forehand going down the line for that away pass. Um, Popovich is a, a player who's new to me, first on the on, first year on the team, um, but played with Steamboat, a club team from Cincinnati, has played in Asheville as well. And it's just so great to have her here in Atlanta. That was one of the players that the Soul coaches said was someone to watch that we think is gonna break out. And that elite throw, putting her receiver into that space where you know she had to make a great catch. Abraham made a really nice protected catch, boxing out the, the defender, but that was exactly the right space to throw to, and that's an exciting goal for for the soul. You know they're right in this. It's only it's 47 seconds left. They're down four. If they can hold here, I think that would be a great way to go into the second quarter. So the soul trying to prevent the radiance from scoring. As a reminder, there is no buzzer beater in the first quarter or second or third we'll only see one in the fourth so radiance is going to try to play out the clock here they're going to try and possess until zero and hope to score with no time on the clock so as they continue to move the disc around disc here with smith nice pass cross field as they're churning up yardage now Continuing to move it down the field. So we're approaching five seconds left here in this first quarter. So when the clock runs out, they will continue until there's a turnover or a goal. So Radiance will have the last possession. Soul just trying to keep them from scoring on it. And this has got to be daunting here for Atlanta. Soul having to keep the marks up. Raleigh are doing a good job of just moving the disc the width of the field until they get their opening. Again, more pass and move. Nice patience from Raleigh. You see the Atlanta marks far off, trying to make them work it and no. eventually make an error. And a pass outside looking for Smith. There's that error. Good defense here from the Atlanta Soul as that is the end of the first quarter, folks. Your score, the Raleigh Radiant 7, the Atlanta Soul 3. An exciting contest so far in this one. That is the end of the first quarter. Any, any thoughts on that first quarter? What, what stood out to you in this one? Yeah, so I think that the Radiants just caught the soul on their heels at the beginning of the game, but then it's kind of been even back and forth for the last six points. So I think the soul have to be happy with that second half of the first quarter, and they have a lot to hang their hat on going into the second. Um, you know, the Radiance was out here warming up a lot earlier than the soul, and so sometimes that makes a difference. It's, it's a balance here in Atlanta because you don't want to be out too early because it can be very hot but you also want to get those extra touches. So maybe that's what's happening. And maybe the soul will, you know, elevate as the game goes on. Yeah. Are you any superstitious in this one? I know some people say, hey, good warm up, I'll play good. Bad warm up, I'll play good, that kind of thing. Well, what, what do you believe is kind of the key to success there in warming up? So I, I think having a good warm up means you will play well. Um, that's something that I often struggle with as a coach, especially when I coach adult men. They have a really hard time getting to the fields early and getting their warm-up doing properly. Um, but we've gotten better at it, and it has made a huge difference, actually. So I think, number one, you need to have a full warm-up, body warm-up, skill warm-up, chemistry warm-up with your teammates. Um, I, I'm of the opinion that the better you warm-up, you're likely to play better. I do think that you have a bad practice before some of your best tournaments and some of your best games. So I wouldn't be upset about that, but the warm-up, you're too close to game time to be messing up. Love it, love it. Hot takes only here from Miranda Knowles. As you see this fun little quarter game, this is the kind of environment you get here at Atlanta Soul Games. Really doing a good job with their fanfare here in this one, and I think that's why uh, for the most part, you see the soul players kind of feed off the energy, you know, from friends, family. It was awesome to kind of see uh, even opposing teams, the amount of people that come and travel out for these games and support. I mean, we've got 
almost standing room only here in the bleachers. So really exciting to see all the people come out. And like you said earlier, it's beautiful weather. This is almost picture perfect weather here for Ultimate. It's a great night for Ultimate here in Atlanta and a great night for whatever this game is. This is like <laughs> something you might see on Extreme Warrior style stuff, just with kids. <laughs> There's some athleticism there. Oh, wow. There Come we go. Play There's for our me. winner. Everyone's here for Harry. Good job, Harry. Harry is our winner <laughs> receiving that disc. All right, go fans. We'll see as we are the about to begin the second quarter action. Once again, if you're just tuning in, 7 to 3 is your score. The Raleigh Radiants are up over your Atlanta Soul. It's been an exciting one so far in this one. And you see here, the soul are set to receive here because they pulled in the first quarter. So that's another reason that that defensive stand at the end of the first quarter was so important is that that's kind of like half a break, really, is not letting the team score their O point and then you get pulled to at the beginning of the next quarter. That's huge. So let's see how the soul O line opens this second. Yeah, let's see what kind of energy they come out here in quarter number two. So Donnie picking up there for the soul as they continue to work it down the field. This one secured. Inside movement. Gerald trying to get back to it. Cannot dig it up. A quick turn there for Atlanta. Raleigh looking to capitalize. Having Atlanta trouble. Atlanta needs a stop here. Let's, let's see if that straight up mark can force the more wide passes like we saw at the end of the first. Raleigh continuing to use that backfield space oh, as looking to make the cut underneath and make a block. That the pick was called. Yeah, the space that that defender just got into is so good because Martha Wilbur's mark is a little further off, the side handler's defender. In that case, Gerald could pop into the lane, almost get a D. It's not in the end zone. Is that deep shot right on the edge of the end line? Back around. Now needing a reset. Going up the field. This one dangerous. Dug up and put in. There for Raleigh on the layout bid. What a play. Anna this time by Tortorici. Yeah, Lyman to Tortorici. There for the goal for the Radiance. A break to start the second quarter. That's really great job by the Radiance. Definitely not what you wanted if you're the soul. They'll put a different O-line back out there, get Griner back out there, and see if they can get back on the board in the second. Again, just a miscue, I think, from the soul offense. Nothing wrong structurally. Just maybe some jitters. Home opener can be hard. Your first game in front of all the fans. It's a different atmosphere than most ultimate especially women's division ultimate has been in the past and so this is it's it's a big ask for these athletes to play in such a high pressure situation yeah right now if i'm coach clark i may be thinking of a little bit of a pool play here maybe something to kind of jack up this team and get them motivated and really amp them up and i would like to see morgan lally or mia griner in a position maybe to go deep down the field, use that speed to their advantage. See the disc being worked around, and as I say that, the matchup of Sue and Lally, that's gonna be really exciting to watch. Yeah, Raleigh's clearly done their scouting. Lally, a very big target, putting an extremely strong deep defender in Sue on Lally, pushing Lally back into the handler space. No. It's a good momentum. Griner now with the disc. And Atlanta electing to be patient here, not really forcing anything down the field. And that one, tough defense. That one blades into the ground. A turn going the other way here. Raleigh to pick up. Yeah, you see Raleigh's def defense didn't allow the disc to continue down that sideline, turning it back for the harder inside forehand throw back to the middle. And just out of the reach there as Proch not able to get that one. And I believe the call was made down the field, maybe a foul, which would explain why she was not able to reach that one. 
See the players sort of like hitting one arm with the other, that's a signal for a foul. And then palms up out to the side, that's no contest, meaning that the mark agreed that she did indeed commit the foul on Titcom causing that turnover. Work it back to the middle. A nice skinny inside, Sue. Now bringing it back outside. I love how Sue goes strong with two hands to make that catch, even though it's a little bit low. Making that claw catch to relieve any doubt that they're going to catch it instead of their defender. Looks like another pick in the middle space there. A pick is actually just a sign of good defense, in my opinion. Um, making offenders cut off their cuts and clear back into the space where other cutters might be trying to cut. And a deep shot put up, looking for Sue in the end zone. And Sue is able to dig that one up there for the score. Punching it in there for Raleigh. Well, that's the fourth assist for Chena Titcom tonight. <laughs> and I, that is what we would expect. And you got to make her do something different. Here as Riedel sends it across the field, this is a classic Raleigh play. What you don't see on the screen is Sue making an undercut that, she then, that they then butterfly into the deep space. It is extremely hard to guard both the under and the away in that same possession. Um, and really, Raleigh teams of all kinds, be they college, men's, women's division, club, pro, they have really inserted that butterfly cut, as we all call it now, into the game. And we've all copied it, and they still do it pretty much better than anybody else. In this case, China hitting Sue for that beautiful away pass. And China has had a myriad of throws here today. Going deep. Deep in their bag here today, and she's been balling out. Yeah. Now a deep shot put up. This one blading away from the receiver, and that's one I know all the coaches watching around the country and watching the Premier Ultimate League, same third Hucks, have got to be shaking their head a little bit there, but Seoul looking to get it back. Yeah, again, I still like the idea. Um, the soul seems to work best when they are getting that deep game into their offense. But yeah, the execution ought to improve. And that one dug up there on the far sideline. Nice inside throw. And Raleigh just really churning up here, kind of moving the disc past the marks. Atlanta playing really flat and not really forcing one direction here on their throws. Yeah, you know, when you play a straight up mark like this, it actually does allow the downfield to get a little closer to their players because you have time to catch up. Um, you still see the downfield defenders mostly backing their player, which is why Raleigh is able to turn up so much under yardage. So you might, that's, that's an adjustment you might look to make um, or just allow those downfield defenders to sell out on the undercuts and see what happens. An inside backhand gaining 20 yards. About 10 to 15 yards away from the end zone here is Raleigh. Perhaps looking for another break. Now an upline cut to the corner. Front corner pylon there for the score is number 32, Annie Baco with the score. Yeah, I think Radiance certainly is happy with that. They took a lot of passes, but there were a lot of yardage gaining passes. There didn't ever seem to be any doubt, not a lot of pressure on any reception in particular. Um, they're creating space for each other and throwing into really wide open spaces. You see Sam Lee there thinking about trying to poach into that space or you know get a D on someone who's not her specific def offensive player. But I think, yeah, the, the marks being so far away tends to make the downfield D think that they should also be far away, which just leads the offense to having a lot of space in general. So I think really it's fine to have the mark that far away, but then you have to get right on your person when they don't have the disc. Yeah, especially here for this Raleigh Radiance team, you know those North Carolina teams, good for you know that offense in small spaces. They love to play that small ball. You've got to say maybe a little bit tighter to them, especially on that mark, especially when You've got such elite throwers. Right. 
I think, again, a, a delay of game call One here. Time, there was time so this means the soul was not on their end zone line and signaling readiness with all seven players when the 50 seconds between getting scored on and and time for them to signal readiness on offense. So they'll start 10 yards deep into their end zone. Now working the disc back around. Having trouble and finally gets an outlet. Some good give and go action as a pick is called down the field. So that's a great time. I like seeing Vargas cut up the line there and, and gain some momentum. That's where you'd like to see a deep cut for them. Still down this deep near sideline, a grinder with the disc. Griner once again. Now deep shot by Galaxy down the field. This one floating and Sue able to read it the whole way. Gets the block. Yeah. Abraham with that huck there. I like the idea, but again, with a defender like Sue in the area, you got to put it out there so that maybe the receiver can outrun Sue, but you're not going to outjump Sue in the deep space. Sue and really a, an elite defender there for the Radiance, especially in the deep space. Sue now with the disc. Back around here for Smith. Another backhand around once again. Radiance Pletsky. plays more of a typical horizontal style offense, so they really only have one option when the disc is trapped on the sideline. And miscues can happen like that one. Pletsky there with the turn. Now a deep shot put up into the end zone there for the score. Quick work there for Griner. Looks like a miscommunication from the Radiance during that uh, turnover where they didn't quite pick up the person that Scored the goal eventually. Got to pick up the most dangerous person who is in Jasky. the end zone. Looks like Jasky there punching it in there for Atlanta. Getting some momentum their way. 10 to 4 is your score here in this second quarter. 5-10 remaining. Atlanta trying to ride the wave here of that momentum and continue to push forward and cut into this deficit. This live broadcast is brought to you by the Premier Ultimate League. The PUL is a 501c6 nonprofit. This league has been community funded since day one, and we are so grateful for the support. We ask that you consider donating to help us continue to transform and fulfill our mission. Head to PremierUltimateLeague.com to donate today. So we continue, and we're back into action. Smith. A deep shot put up in the space. Two soul jerseys racing towards it, but not able to get to it. So that is red all the way. On the doorstep now is Raleigh. Couple of give and go action here on the front pylon, and this one punched in by Smith for the score. Quick work there for Raleigh as they add to their lead. Yeah, Bacchus Milestrup with the assist to Tyler Smith there. Yeah, I think, you know, Raleigh really able to get their pull play working from the get-go. Just a centering pass to Titcomb, who's able to send a deep shot almost immediately to bit of Gary Curtis, who's a very strong target with height and speed heading deep. Yeah, if I had a teleprompter now and I could do a little touch screen circle, I would be circling bit of Curtis. She's been everywhere here for Raleigh, especially in that deep space. Like you said, fast, tall, strong. She's right. been a really great look here for Raleigh. Yeah, I'm so happy for Bitta Gary Curtis because she started her ultimate playing career a little bit later. Um, she started in Nashville, played for the Nightshade, moved to Atlanta, played here for club and pro teams, and finally found her home 
in Raleigh on the Radiance and their club teams. And I'm just pleased for the game to have her play because, you know, having these tall athletic receivers who can also throw is sort of a new thing for the for the game because typically it was like deep receivers who didn't know what to do with the disc mm -hmm. and you know last week against the shadow Bidigary Curtis ended up around the disc a whole bunch and she can do that too so having multi dimensions to her play it's really impressive yeah it's great for the game of ultimate is a deep shot put up a 50 50 ball we're gonna have a call made yeah, it looks like Jordan Harn thought that there was some contact as she went up to make the play on that floaty initiating pass. I think the, the pull went out of bounds, and so that's why the soul got it closer to half field. And another miscommunication here from Atlanta. Dis back here with Raleigh. Raleigh looking to make quick work. Nice underneath throw. So looking to get past midfield. There we go there for Raleigh. Another backhand, a 50-50 ball. This one dug up and picked on the air. And into the end zone there for the score. Another break for Raleigh. Looks like that was Meg Manning there on the sky and then the assist into the end zone. Yeah, you know, I think... There was some actually really strong defense in there from the Atlanta Soul. Griner switching on to an underpass, making them take something a lot harder. It's just that Raleigh has a really strong roster and they're gonna make plays. And in that case, it was Mag Manning coming up with that sort of floaty, errant pass. So here you see Griner switching onto that open person. This could definitely be a D by the Soul. So there are seeds of what could become a really great defensive scheme here. And, you know, the Atlanta Soul has nine new players first year on the team. And so I think if you're the Soul, yes, you're down 4-12 to 12 in your home opener. That's not great, but you might also think about this on a two- or three-year plan where you're actually, like, super pumped about players like Popovich and Morgan Lally, lots of new players who are shining and Griner coming back for more this year. As it's 12 to four here with three minutes remaining here in this first half. Galaxy back to Donnie. Donnie a nice fake to open up the mark. Gerald. It's good movement right here from the soul. An inside backhand dug up, and as they continue to work it past midfield, Galaxy here with the disc. Back around. As they're moving it, now down the field once again. That one, Atlanta, good movement. Lee, this one bobbled there. Cannot keep it alive, I believe was Gerald. Sam Lee and Donnie Ortiz doing a great job in the middle backspace there. Martha Wil Wilbur making great catches and, and awesome passes. They just couldn't keep a hold of it. Now power position for Raleigh, a deep shot put up. It's blading and a picture perfect pass. Once again to the end zone, Raleigh punching it in 13 to four. Tick home to Prosh on that goal where you get, you know, Tick home getting some yards on the a small under. And then, you know, she can do it on both sides, backhand and forehand. But the way she gets nice and low on that forehand and is able to throw to a, a matchup that you like and is able to put it over that defender's head. Enjoying the stream so far. If you support the visibility of women and gender expansive players in Professional Ultimate, we appreciate your donation. Donate using the Venmo or PayPal that is on your screen right now. Once again, you're tuning into the stream. This is the Premier Ultimate League, the Atlanta Soul taking on the Raleigh Radiance. 
Raleigh up 13-4 here in this one. Joined here with Miranda Knowles, Adekaliande here on the broadcast. It's been an exciting game here in this one for the Atlanta Souls home opener. Raleigh has been running away with it so far here in this first half. But there have been some really bright moments here for Atlanta, and they're looking to capitalize here on offense. Martha doing a great job as that mid in the Hex offense, getting it out to the wings and back to the mid. This is their pass midfield, Atlanta going backwards. Some good movement around Lally here with the disc. Lally racing up the field, a hammer shot put up, and that one is read like a book, picture perfect, able to dig it up on the slide. That might be the catalyst that Atlanta needs. Super impressive, really on both ends of that play. I love that Martha Wilbur is like, we need something to spark us and puts up a hammer. And Popovich, my word, with the ability to grab this disc as soon as she sees it, that's just A plus reflexes from Popovich. Excited to see that. So let's see if Popovich spurs this Atlanta, Atlanta soul offense and defense. This team needing some energy, some juice right now. They're down eight, 114 remaining here in this first half. And anything can happen. You know, the soul ha has everything they need here. They just need to clean up the errors. It's a bit what happened last week to the Radiance against the Shadow. Radiance and Shadow, I thought, played about even, but Radiance had a ton of errors and Shadow basically had none. And tonight, Radiance has way fewer errors. Soul is having a lot of miscommunications, but they're still on the board and certainly not out of contention. You see Morgan Lally, the captain there for the Soul, being the first one down on the D point to put on a mark. So we are under a minute left to play here in this first half. Raleigh working it down the field. We'll see Back what around Raleigh here to Smith, the give and go action here from Raleigh. See what Raleigh does with their clock management. I think. Back inside, a miscommunication behind the receiver, and now Atlanta, an opportunity here to get a break. Yeah, I think if you're the Raleigh coaches, you're not pleased with that. You would have wanted your athletes to possess the disc until the clock runs out. Looks here, like a timeout is called here by Atlanta. Right. So, I. Mad respect for the Atlanta coaches. Great clock management. It's running down on your screen, but it is actually stopped at 32 seconds on the clock. And Atlanta now will have a chance to try to possess this until the dis until the, the clock gets to zero. 32 more seconds, and there's no horn at the end of those 32 seconds. They play it out. So you definitely want to be the team with possession when the clock runs out at the end of the first, second, and third quarters so that you can have that last opportunity to score. Say So if broadcaster Knowles can <laughs> pass the mic now to Coach Knowles. Coach Knowles, what are you drawing up here with 32 seconds remaining? You really need this big score to get some momentum going in the halftime. Yeah, I think I would, you know, I wouldn't change anything, but I would definitely want to gain some yards, make – make Raleigh respect your deep space, but probably still throw some unders that are a little bit more high percentage, at least for like 20 seconds. And then as you get maybe to the 50 yard line, then you're trying to just possess until the time runs out. And then you just hit that first open person like you always say in practice. So it looks like you're trying to see the mark being put on yeah, you can sub as many people as you want on the timeout, so both teams allowed to put their best lines in. As that one mm. dug up and caught. Still in possession here with Atlanta. Looks like Abraham making a strong catch under duress from Raleigh. She looks to be grimacing. Let's hope she's all right and able to come back in this one. Going to take the injury sub. Vargas coming in for Abraham. We hope Abraham's all right, and we appreciate that really tough play, putting her body between the disc and the defender, sacrificing that, and getting Vargas here with the disc with 20 seconds on the clock. So 
20 seconds on the clock. Atlanta looking to make quick work, working it down the line. Vargas here with the disc. And a blade, I may have been a piece, a little bit of a hand block as that's a turn. Now Raleigh calling a timeout, six seconds remaining here in the first half. Looking to punch one in and gain momentum going into the second half. Yeah, that's a shame for the Atlanta Soul. I think the decision making was all correct. Uh, a little bit of a miscommunication between Vargas and Ford. Ford was open and not moving and then moved and you know, that's just really hard. Sometimes it's harder to throw to somebody who's unmarked than it is to someone who's marked because you know you both are in agreement of where the open space is. Um, but yeah, really unfortunate for the soul, but Radiance now have gotten the disc back with six seconds on the clock. They'll almost certainly have the last possession here unless there's a turnover on the first pass. Honestly, a very smart timeout because of those PEL rules where they have the last possession and it's untimed. So if I'm Raleigh right now, I just run the offense. Yeah, both, both Radiance coaches, Bridget Johnson and Player Pierce, have ties to Atlanta. Bridget Johnson went to my lovely high school, Paideia School. Unfortunately, she was too busy being awesome at basketball <laughs> and soccer to play ultimate in high school, but she started playing at UNC and has become an excellent coach in her own right. Player Pierce p played for me on the Hustle and Chain Lightning for quite a few years before moving, unfortunately, to Durham. So Raleigh here with the disc, trying to make something happen. The sound went off there, the zero's on the clock. Raleigh can remain with possession. Smith looking for the backhand around, knocking on the doorstep now is Raleigh. Back to Smith. Still moving the disc around, electing to go backwards. Oh, the backhand up and coming out of nowhere there with a big time rejection to end the first half. That's huge there for Atlanta. Let's see if they can remind, ride that momentum going here into the second half. Yeah, definitely a great way to end the first half. Same as we ended the first quarter, actually forcing that pass wide and the defender just coming up with a ton of speed and athleticism to make that play. So, you know, if you're Raleigh, you're like, we think that we're a championship weekend contender. That cannot be happening. You've got to be able to punch those final end of quarter plays in. That's actually what won them both the semis and finals last year at PLL championship weekend. Props to the soul for having great defense in the end of quarters. And I imagine they'll be talking about how to clean up their offense at halftime. So we'll be back shortly right here on the broadcast. Your ha halftime score, Raleigh Radiance 13, Atlanta Soul 5.
15 to 5 here with your, your Atlanta Soul. If you've been enjoying the stream so far, Atlanta Soul is a majority women owned and majority people of color owned small business, and they produce these streams entirely in house. Donate to support their work using the Venmo or PayPal that was on your screen as we're back in action. Miranda, what were the biggest takeaways there from that first half? So, yeah, I think if you're the Atlanta Soul, you're pretty happy. There's some, some moments of greatness that you want to capitalize on, perhaps like this, forcing some turnovers. Um, especially in the width against the Radiance. Um, and you got to clean up that offense. So, you know, a little bit of a disappointment here on that first pass turnover. But if you're the Radiance, I think you're quite pleased with that first half. Their goal is to come out here and not show anything particularly special and run away with this game, which they certainly had in the first half, and a nice first score there to bit of Gary Curtis. I think... The Radiance, they have their sights set on championship weekend. They have to finish in the top two of their division, and they play D.C. twice, so every other game is a must-win for the Radiance. So, bidding Gary Curtis once again there in the end zone there for Raleigh. Not a replay. It's not deja vu. This is live coming at you. She has been moving here for Raleigh here in this one. I believe that's her third or fourth score of this game third score got confirmation there for also statistician right here in the booth Miranda Knowles a woman yeah. of many talents here so far yeah my my dad used to stand up in basically the rafters of the Paideia basketball games when I was playing in high school and record himself calling my high school game so that he could dictate the stats to himself <laughs> and we could talk about it on the way home so uh, I do have that mind for sports Keeping track of the stats while telling y'all what we see out here. Sue with the pull. Sue, this one coming right towards the broadcast booth. Hayden Austin Nab not able to make the play I over think on the sideline. We're going to accredit that to his stat line, a drop to Hayden Austin Nab before the season starts. Hopefully the first and only one for <laughs> Atlanta Open Ultimate this season. So Atlanta to start off with the disc here in the middle. Disc there by Doran. I love that break to the front of the stack or the front area from the get-go for the soul. Good grab by Lee. Now Galaxy here with the disc. Back around. Good movement here from the soul with some, some zip in their step. Knocking on the doorstep of the end zone. Now needing a reset, a shot, a blade inside. Will it count for the score? Yes, it will. Quick work there from the Atlanta Soul offense. Ortiz to Lee for the goal on that one. Um, I love the way that Donnie is able to move the mark a ton here. So if you watch during this possession, Donnie makes some really good realistic fakes to move the mark. And this is a strong mark from the Radiance. Donnie is really able to make them move all over the place to open up that lane to Sam Lee on the inside. Sam Lee punching it in. Didn't even know she was in the end zone. That's how open she was. You talk about just running your offense and eventually you'll be in. I think that's actually a great mindset to have. And you see they're out there still having fun. They're not paying attention to the score, which actually leaves them open to, to achieve some really cool things. I'm sure they've set some micro goals here at halftime to get back into this game, but also get their feet under them and get their season cranking so that they can, you know, maybe catch a game at Nashville next weekend or in two weeks. And that's a, that's a very winnable game for the Soul. So they want to see this as practice. As they're looking to ride momentum, Griner to pull away here for the Soul. Now trying to match that energy here on defense. Smith here with the Rock here for Raleigh. An inside flick to continue to work it up the field. And so far, Atlanta's still in that kind of a laid back Kind of flat mark as a deep shot put up into space. Looking for Bittergear up in the air and able to read it the whole way with the left hand with two soul jerseys in the area. So the fourth goal for Bittergear Curtis tonight. And while 
that is not the result you would like. I actually love there was some great switching again underneath here that led to two defenders being able to make a play for that. I think that's Lally and Anderson. That is very good defense. And at this level, you cannot just define good defense by getting the disc. You have to be able to take those micro victories, especially against a strong roster like the Raleigh Radiance has brought here tonight. And you have to be like, actually, even though they scored, we didn't allow them to chew up so many yards under. We forced a hanging, floating, deep pass. We had two defenders under it. They just also happened to make the play. So I think net positive for the soul on that defensive mm. possession. Yeah, and they always say good defense leads to championships. But hey, better offense usually wins nine times out of 10. And when you've got Mitigary Curtis down the field, you kind of like that match up there if you're Raleigh. For sure. You talk about, we were, my high school captains and I were talking about how we define success. And really what it comes down to in Ultimate is you make fewer turnovers than the other team. And that is, that is what it is. And so Seoul, just having a few of these errors, you know, you really think it's a 15-6 game. You know, that's, that's just nine more turnovers, one for a couple of people. And that's the difference in this game. And now we're seeing that Hex offense really move and a deep shot put up down the field, a jump ball. This one is brought down. Scooped up as they're on the doorstep, looking to punch it in and a big time kick spike to juice up the crowd. That's a much needed score there for the Atlanta Soul. So Melissa Wilbur making that awesome deep catch over her defender and dishing it to Ortiz, who gives it right back to her. This is a great matchup to throw to. Martha able to elevate. Ortiz makes a nice grab. You see there, almost a miscommunication, not knowing which way exactly they're going. Ortiz finds Wilbur again in the end zone. And the disc goes out of frame to the stars. Yeah, Martha Wilbur not bashful on putting people on posters. She's known for her highlight plays from Athena in the college game, several making it on Sports Center. She is a big time player for the Atlanta Soul. Look for her to get in the fray and make big plays like that for the rest of the season. Yeah, Martha is, I'm so glad that Martha moved to Atlanta after her career at UGA. She is just making an immediate impact in the community. She plays a ton of ultimate, she's out at goal tee when we play and man I can't run anymore but I can still throw goals to Martha because that's how good she is so yeah. she's fun to be on the on the team with fun to have on the goal sideline the and the wicked fun to throw goals to now another deep shot put up in the space racing towards the end zone but this one too much blade and too much distance a quick turn going the other way now for Atlanta this one just out of the reach, back again towards Raleigh. It seems like anytime Atlanta has got that momentum, it's a little miss, jump, uh, excuse me, a judgment call right there with the disc. Gotta be careful. Yeah, you just gotta cherish that possession. Oof, tough call here. Atlanta having really awesome athletic D. You can see there's a fire lit under the sole coming into the second half. Um, they got a really great goal from Martha Wilbur on that last point, and they want this. This looks like it's going to be played as a contested foul, which means that the offense offender called a foul. And the defense disagrees with that. In this case, the players choose to go to the observer, and Enzo calls it no foul. So a little momentum wave, now a deep shot put up immediately in space. A good box out, it's read the whole way there for Atlanta. That's a huge grab. Let's see if they can capitalize off that big play. So nice to see Abraham back on the field after that injury at the end of the second quarter and making plays like that, my word. Glad she's out there. And that's just great body control to box out the defender and get the disc. Now Atlanta looking to get in their set. Back inside, around here to Anderson. Now this near sideline, a pick called down the field. Disc will remain here with Abraham. This was, 
if I were the Atlanta Soul, I think at halftime I would have set the goal of breaking the radiance at least once in this second half. And this is their opportunity. They've been able to work it up quite a ways. Let's cherish that possession, hang on to the disc, and punch it in. Atlanta having to go backwards and a run through D the other way now for Raleigh. Looks like that was Manning there with the block. Great speed to take the inside lane and get that D. Now near sideline. Perhaps a deep shot put up, and this one is red the whole way. A block now going back the other way here for Atlanta. That was Ham. Yeah. Or excuse me, Harn. Man, these teams just trading hyper-athletic Ds. As a commentator, you love to see it, but I think both offenses would like to possess the disc a bit more here. It's a long and grueling point here for both sides. Trading turnovers. Smith here with the rock. And I believe a timeout is called here by Raleigh. Much needed breather here. 6.01 remaining here in the third quarter. 15 to seven is your score. Coach Pierce had seen enough of that. Two turnovers from each side. And he said, you know what? Let's get some new folks back out there. We've got 70 seconds of a timeout. This is their first timeout in this second half. First of two timeouts. Reset some things and see if we can have some clean offense. Again, they're seeing this as a practice as well so that they can get better and better every week in their search for championship weekend. Enjoying the stream so far, Atlanta Soul is a majority women owned and majority people of color owned small business. And they produce these streams entirely in house. Donate to support their work using the Venmo or PayPal that is on your screen. So 601 remaining here in this third quarter. 15 to seven is your score. We've traded turnovers back and forth on this point, a long grueling point. Both teams really you know, filling each other out here in this one and not able to capitalize. What, what do you think is gonna be the difference maker right here to see either one of these teams come out on top here in this point? Yeah, you see Radiance starting out in a side stack, which is a great way to start um, leaving two thirds of the field open, in this case for Jenny Way to cut into it. And a deep shot put up, and this one is red like a book, and then a miscommunication as that one goes back past Ortiz, not able to field that one. Yeah, really great sort of like center field or free safety defense by Martha Wilbur, just staying in that lane. They thought J Way was open for that butterfly cut. And Martha gets the D, but again, just lack of chemistry built so far on this team leads to a turnover. Raleigh now a little more patient here as they move the disc. An inside flick just outside the reach. And that's a turnover. Not able to handle it there is Jetty Way. Martha Wilbur set an amazing mark, making that player turn back to the inside forehand and takes just a little bit more time and is a little harder to execute leading into that turnover. Now working it up the line. This one dug up by Wilbur. Now looking for the deep shot as Lally's racing towards it, but this one right in the lane there for Raleigh, able to read that one the whole way. Four turnovers for each team in this point, two each before the timeout and two each after. Some team is gonna have to decide to settle in. Again, you see Seoul with great Ds, but also Seoul with the errors. You know, Radiance had a couple good Ds, but really, Seoul is in control of this. They can make that decision to tighten up the offense. And another block here for the Atlanta Soul. This is one of the longest points I've ever announced. As both teams trading turnovers back and forth, Seoul looking to capitalize. Adekale, clearly you haven't announced enough high school games or games in the Northwest in the fall when there's only rain to be seen. There's a lot worse points than this one, let me tell you. <laughs> Say, I might be needing oxygen after this one as a turnover there for the Atlanta Soul going back to Raleigh. Vargas putting it all out there. I, I trust the Soul is very fit. They're very young players. Perhaps they can outlast the Radiance this point. And this one is going to be a big momentum swing for either side. Whoever can punch it is a hand block by Martha Wilbur. Now the Soul looking to run a deep shot put up into space. Looking for the end zone, just short of it. Lally now with the rock. 
Lex to go backwards, back to Wilbur, and now finally punching it into the end zone there for Atlanta. And that's a break there for the Atlanta Soul. A huge momentum swing here in this one. You have to be smiling if you're an Atlanta Soul fan. We got bubbles out here on the track. People are excited about this. And again, this is what they wanted to do. They wanted to showcase their deep shots. Really good job. I call it going with the green light, right? Like that is a fast break. They are off to the races. Radiance maybe is a little complacent, maybe a little tired. Soul is young and fit and they don't care, right? They're just gonna go for it. I love that deep look. Coach Maddie Fry is happy about it. All the fans are happy about it. Let's see what can happen here. 8.15, 3.26 on the clock in the third. Let's see. And you know, if you're Raleigh, you're up seven currently here. But after that last point, that's gotta be a little deflating for you. Now that's a point which you felt like you had, it, you know, the whole way. It was 50-50 back and forth. There were several turns by both teams. Everyone is tired on the line. You Who used was playing on the field. Out. You used a timeout. And now a big momentum swing there for the soul. Let's see if they can continue to ride that wave and get another break, perhaps. As a reminder, a break is when you start on defense and end up scoring and get broken if you start on offense and do not score. It's just like in tennis with a serve. And that is the first one for the Atlanta Soul tonight, hopefully not the last. This is here on the far sideline. A big around, almost blocked there by Anderson. Sue now with the disc. So it continues the width of the field, Smith. Back around. And just working in this small space is Raleigh as Sue punches it in. That's quick work for the Raleigh Radiance offense. 16 to eight. Tyler Smith has some of the most beautiful throwing form that I've seen recently. If you are a young player wanting to learn how to throw, you watch Tyler Smith throw how she gets low with her entire body, brings her center of gravity nice and low, and really puts a ton of snap on the disc. It is just textbook. Watch, watch, oh, we missed it. Well, I'm sure it's gonna happen again, but watch Tyler Smith with the, the way that her body moves, the way that she confidently steps all the way out away from her body, gets so much snap on the disc. The disc never wobbles when it comes out of Tyler Smith's hand. And she's Very got impressive. a quick release as well. It almost seems as if she's already turning upfield and she lets it go. Yeah, she's one of the stronger players. She definitely spends a ton of time in the weight room and you can tell the way that she's so stable and can pivot in all 360 degrees and release beautiful snap throws in any direction. Keep watching Tyler Smith in this game and moving forward. Definitely a player to watch in the POL this season. Mm -hmm. And that's... Definitely one of those kind of players that you, I know I personally hate to guard. <laughs> when the ones that can't are very shifty, got those really quick twitch fibers going down the field as Martha Wilbur, another one of those kind of players, looks to move the disc down the field here for the Soul. Soul making some bigger cuts here. Got some players coming from the deep space into under. And the Wilbur toe in the line. Looking to move the disc off the sideline, having trouble. Looking to work it up the line, a nice pretty throw and that one is caught in the end zone for the score. Great job there by Atlanta. I believe that was Sarah Kingsley Hart punching it in there for the soul. Yeah. So Martha Wilbur with her third assist, she also has a goal, Kingsley Hart, her first goal of the night. Kingsley Hart has intense speed and it's so great to see her be able to showcase that on the professional stage. Kingsley Hart does a lot of coaching here in Atlanta, so I am sure that her girls division teams from Midtown High School's JV are super happy about that for her. She's also the USAU Southeast Women's Section Coordinator. A lot of these athletes, you know, out here, yes, they are professionals, they're getting paid to do this, but they're not getting paid to do everything that they're doing, be that as part of the team here for the Atlanta Soul, the coaching, you know, most teams just pass the hat for their coaches, and no one's getting paid for their work 
with volunteering through USAU. So a huge shout out to Kingsley Hart and so many of these other athletes on both squads who give so much to the sport and make an right, impact from the top down, goal. being great role models as professional athletes. And that's one of athletes. the biggest things I love about the game of Ultimate and in the community. It's not, it doesn't stop with what you do here on the field. It's all about giving back to the community and the game, giving back to the game itself. As you see a nice run through block there for Atlanta. I believe that is Charlotte Doran. This one kept up. Now another opportunity here for Atlanta perhaps to get a break. Yeah. Yeah, Charlotte Doran started with her back to the disc as that defender on this side and was able to play a few lanes and drop stepped into that throwing lane before Chena could come back to it. Looks like a foul call and almost was a foot block. Yeah, so that's the signal for a foul, con no contest. Chena, it's hard to know if you kicked the disc or a hand when you get a foot block. And so they had that discussion and worked it out easily without the help of the observer. Working it down the line, front corner and just out of bounds. Be a turn, Radiance now to pick up. But Seoul with good defensive position right now. This is Callahan country. And in the PUL, the front cones are 80 yards apart. So this is a long way to go. Having a turnover that deep is actually not that bad. Put on a hard defense for 80 full yards, see what happens. Still close to their end zone here is Raleigh. As they continue to gain yardage, now a deep shot put up. Look at the help defense back down the field. That's a great switch there by Atlanta. Awesome timeout call by Coach Clark. Uh, they got a couple of Ds in this point, looking to clean it up for some offense. I think that's an awesome use of a timeout. So with 20 seconds remaining here in quarter number three, your score is the Raleigh Radiant 16, Atlanta Soul 9. They have an opportunity now to kind of hold for one possession, punch it in and gain some momentum going into the fourth. It would be really interesting, you know, for these first three quarters with the no buzzer beater play out the possession rule to have like a special team where you could call this timeout, put in your seven best small ball possession players and Make sure that you possess for these 20 seconds. Do not turn it over and let the other team have a chance. And so it, it's interesting. Let's see who Coach Clark puts in on these for these last 20 seconds and how they try to possess the disc and prevent Raleigh from notching one more point in the third quarter. So with 20 seconds remaining, let's see what they can draw up and You see the offense has to set first and then the defense has time to get their set the way they want it while the offense is unable to move. Good initial cut to clear space, back around. Now a deep shot put up immediately, stand still. That's a beautiful shot, deep, just mishandled there at the end, not able to do Corral it in, excuse me, is Popovich. And that, excuse me, will not be the end of the third quarter. Raleigh will have an opportunity here. Yeah, I imagine possession begins when the other team's possession ends. So as soon as that was a turnover, Raleigh's in possession of it and they get to play out this end of the third quarter. It's a great shot by Liv Ford going deep to Popovich. I got no problem with that. And another great read, now Blade put up into the end zone. A great job to box out and get the block to end the third quarter. Great job by Hannah Abraham. Having a great game tonight. I, I think Abraham has made a positive impact on both defense and offense and is able to get position and then retain position against an aggressive offensive player. That kind of contact is completely allowed in Ultimate Frisbee, just like in basketball or soccer where you're jostling for position. And so Abraham getting that position and able to 
keep the position by using her body kind of like a box out in basketball. We love that. That's just great skills, defensive skills on the receiving end. You know, it's, it's a really heads up play. If young players are, you know, watching the game for the first time, this game of ultimate, body control and body contact can be a, a, a tough task to kind of grasp here in this one, especially if you're coming from a different sport. If you're coming from, you know, a basketball, cross soccer, you're so used to throwing your body around. But in this non-contact sport, sometimes those can be called fouls. Right. I've had quite a few athletes come from tennis, and they have the most natural throwing form ever, but they are very uncomfortable with contact because, you know, there's no net separating them anymore. Same thing with dancers. Dancers can be amazing ultimate players coming with such athleticism and balance and honestly body awareness, but the contact can be hard sometimes whether you transition from a contact sport or an individual sport. Mm -hmm. So 16 to nine is your score currently if you're just tuning in. As we head into the fourth quarter, about a minute here until the pull here in the fourth quarter. Anything you would like to see here from either side going into this last quarter of play? Yeah, I would love for the soul to get another break at least. I think you could set a micro goal of getting maybe two breaks in this quarter since you got one in the third. Um, or maybe one and a half, counting that last half break at the end of the quarter. I think you could also set the goal if you're the soul to win the fourth quarter, right? Like that is a doable goal. So you got to imagine that it's zero zero on that scoreboard instead of nine sixteen, and see what you can do, because you're unlikely to score seven goals all in this quarter. So let's make it a micro goal, kind of like that game to three that we were talking about earlier, and see what see what can happen. On the other hand, if you're Raleigh, I think that you would like to put this team in the ground and keep them there forever. This is the only time Raleigh and Seoul are playing each other this year. And so this is your only chance to assert your dominance. And so I think if you're the Radiance, you would like to have the fourth quarter be your best quarter and really extend your lead. So right here, fourth quarter action coming live at you right now. Here with Miranda Knowles, Otter Kaliande here on the call. So far, we've had a great contest. And if you've been enjoying watching and listening to us, make sure you donate here to the Atlanta Soul as we can continue to put on these broadcasts and, and display some of the best ultimate here in the country, right here in the Premier Ultimate League. All right, 12 more minutes, fourth quarter. At the end of this one, you will see a buzzer beater. So when time expires after that horn goes off, the team, that is when... That is when play ends. Yeah, deep shot immediately put up, blading just a little too much on it. Sol, I think, must have set the goal to use the deep space. We've seen lots of really great looks. I I'm a fan of that one as well. It just has to be executed a little differently. But I, I like the strategy. I like the idea. So an opportunity now here for Raleigh's defense their counterattack squad to make something happen and perhaps get a break good downfield defense here from Atlanta trying to run through really great snag there by Carmen Tormi still moving the disc now trying to get across midfield a backhand put down the line and Raleigh is just finding holes left and right now currently as they continue to turn yardage. I love the effort on defense by Charlotte Doran, both off the disc when she's trying to shut down lanes, but also setting hard marks on, taking away the lanes first. Nice roll off of her person. Now back around and just outside the outreach arms. That's a turn, a effort gift given off. back to Atlanta. Defensive effort pays off. It's eventually going to wear down the other team's offense. Ortiz back up to Lee. Lee down the line. A nice open cut. Continue to work it down the line as Wilbur is able to read it. Wilbur directing tra traffic now. Needing an outlet. Wilbur might have to elect for a deep shot. and It's actually a really smart 
throwing move. You know, if you pivot in the right ways, you might draw a foul, just like, you know, in basketball you go up and hope to get a foul when you can't make the shot. So Wilbur getting a new count on that. It's back around looking for Ortiz. Nice fake from Ortiz, really shifting the mark and a hand block. That's huge there for Raleigh. That was a big time play. Matty Plutsky with excellent activity on the mark, staying really active to prevent all throws. Now Sue with all the time in the world here. So this is something that you can expect to happen when part of your team's strategy is to be far away on the mark. The other team may call a marking violation that you're not close enough to be counting. As Wilbur gets the block, and another block coming the other way this time, there by Doran. And we have a call on immediate jeers and boos here from the crowd. Yeah, so Sam Lee does get in marking distance here, you can see. Wilbur gets enough of it that then Doran can get it, can finish that D. Lyman thinks that she was prevented from making the play by contact by Doran. This seems like one that will likely go to the observer. Riedel also having her say in this. Number nine, Ginny Riedel, another Atlanta native here on the Raleigh Radiance, grew up in Marietta. Um, played with me at Carleton College and then on Seattle Riot back before professional ultimate days and somehow is still playing. <laughs> I won't reveal her age, but she is older than I am. So, <laughs> as the hills, perhaps. <laughs> but she still gets it done and is on this roster because she's talented, especially on the defensive end. Love to see Ginny still out here. So, no foul. Disc will be here with Atlanta as they're looking to run. About 10 yards from the end zone. Wilbur here with the rock. Ortiz frees up. Back to Wilbur, give and go action. Wilbur wants the disc back. And running through this time, Raleigh again with another block. Sue here with the disc. A nice inside throw, really opening up the width of the field. Yeah, that throw has been coined the Oyo, the outside, inside, out. So throwing to the space behind the mark, which we usually call the inside space, but with the outside edge of the disc up. So outside, inside, out. A deep shot put up and into the end zone for the score. A lot of chaos in that one. But Raleigh figuring it out and punching it in. 17 to 9 is your score. So Lyman with her third assist there. And, you know, I think that the result of that call was probably correct. It didn't look like... I didn't see a foul from my vantage point, which is you know many yards away from it. Um, but Lyman, to her credit, plays great D, streaks down the field, and then ends up throwing the assist, which is an awesome way for an elite athlete to respond to a step back, like not having the call go your way. And the Discraft Ultra Star is the official disc of the Premier Ultimate League. Discraft, the worldwide leader in disc sports. Now, Miranda, you've got to think the same way that Atlanta won that long grueling point. That has got to be deflating for Atlanta this time. You now, just probably less than 10 yards away from the end zone after a great defensive effort. Yeah, I think there just is a little bit of clogging um, in the end zone. I, I imagine that the Hex offense, which to be fair, I've never played or coached that offense per se. Um, but I, I think that when you get close to, the off close to the end zone, every offense has to change and shift based on the different spaces that are available. And there was just a little bit too much jumbled up in the middle there leading to a block. And almost great effort by Griner. A little behind her is Anderson was trying to center the disc, and now Raleigh, another opportunity to punch it in the end zone and get a break. Smith with the disc. Back around. Smith once again here with the disc. An inside throw, and this one is blocked and put down. You see a little bit of an adjustment. Griner marking Smith much tighter. Some of these throwers that have 
a ton of range like Smith and Titcomb, Lyman. It looks like Sol maybe has adjusted to having a, a tighter still flat mark on them from the first half to the second half. That's a, a really smart adjustment so that Raleigh's throwers can't have as big of an impact on the game. She possession kept alive. Atlanta. Opportunity once again for a hold. Some give and go action between Griner and Anderson. But Raleigh once again saying no, no, no. Coming up with the block. And short field now to work with. One of my coaching idols, Tina Booth, always says that anything you can throw high, you can throw better low. And I think that that high throw and go pass, if it had been a lower release, would have been excellent. Great idea. Just take that extra time. As Tyler Smith has been a really big quarterback here for this Raleigh Radiance team. He's almost getting every other. Smith once again here with the Rock. Yeah, Raleigh has the benefit of having Smith, Titcomb, and Lyman. And running through once again with the D. Atlanta, another opportunity. I believe that was Tuna coming up with a big time block. Yeah, so Radiance has these three all-star quarterbacks spread across their lines. And Atlanta is really looking for someone to emerge in that role. Like, who is the center handler for the soul or the center back, as they call it, in their offense? I think that that's something they're still trying to figure out. And sometimes it's Ortiz, sometimes it's Lally, sometimes it's Griner. And they all have potential in that role. They just are going to need to build it out throughout the season. So as an errant throw there for Atlanta, gives the disc back to Raleigh. They're looking to get into that offense. Smith here with the disc. A nice blade around into the end zone and a little collision. No foul play, was just looking to kind of stop right there, put on the brakes by Abraham and then punching it in. Once again there for Raleigh, this time is Tortorici. Yeah, two goals and one assist for Tortorici tonight. It's kind of fun in a night where you score 18 goals as a team, a lot of players get on the board with, with a ton of stats. So that's maybe something that some players on Radiance might be thinking about too, is pumping up those stats and getting onto the leaderboards across the league. You know, a lot of these games do get played in bad weather, and so in a beautiful night like this, you might be thinking, all right, let's 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 score 23, 25 goals and, and see what happens for this Raleigh Radiance team. Yeah, especially when, like you said, Elements are perfect right now. Little to negative wind. Um, announced a couple games last year where we had 20 mile per hour winds at least. And I mean, was not envious of them out there on that field with wind like that. Some of the elite throwers having trouble with the throw in that kind of conditions. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I loved playing in Minnesota and then out in Seattle is I got to really push myself as a thrower in the elements from freezing bitter cold to constant rain um, and if you put yourself through that and come out on the other side you'll be the better thrower for it for sure yeah if you can throw in those kind of conditions you can throw anywhere Wilbur nice left-handed grab now a deep shot put up immediately this one floating into space and red all the way a turn Good block there for Raleigh, this time by Neville. Yeah, the Atlanta's still clearly trying to hit those deep spaces. I think that one was just a little bit ambitious. The throw went up before the cut had really developed. But you got to throw in motion, so I get it. I like, I like the idea. So Raleigh trying to work once again to get a break. They had an open cutter deep. Nice inside backhand, threading the needle to Sue. Let's continue to work around. Baseball slide to dig that one up on the far sideline. Chloe Green with the disc here is someone we haven't said their name that much tonight, but she really stood out to me last weekend in the game against DC. And it's just such a solid handler, composed thrower. They're just working in their set and Sue once again 
The button hook there for the score. 19 to nine is your score here with 331 remaining in the fourth. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Raleigh's patience around the end zone and able to use all the handlers in that space. And Sue dishes it off and, uh, and is able to throw and go, let things develop. It's really lovely offense. And that's a testament to their system. You know, it works. It's You've seen success from the Raleigh Radiant. That's something that Atlanta is looking to build on and continue to kind of work with those new players. That, like you said, nine new players this year on this roster looking to kind of capitalize. And I think with more practice, more reps, that offense is going to continue to shine here for Atlanta yeah, this season. Absolutely. I think that, you know, Raleigh is, I think, something that we pre preach is score from the front to the front. That's how you just saw them score and score from the back to the back. If they are able to get some hammers to the back cones across the field, they're going to score in a more traditional way. However, other teams can poach against it and can predict that's going to happen. Atlanta, on the other hand, is playing a different kind of offense and might be able to utilize that to prevent poaches. Other teams don't know exactly where the disc is coming as much. So as it develops, it could really be beneficial. So the disc now with Vargas. Now over to Anderson. Anderson elects for the hammer and not able to handle it. Raleigh with a short field here on the 40-yard line or excuse me, on the 45. Some good handler defense pushing Raleigh backwards. Good seal there from Lally, and now the around gets let off. And Raleigh churning up the field. Lally playing good handler defense in the backfield. Raleigh's spacing is just immaculate. Riedel... As she passes it to Titcomb, there's a new reset. She gets all the way downfield. And the, there's just tons of space, good balance. The thrower who hits the reset becomes a reset. Um, it's, it's just textbook ultimate as we've seen it for years and years in the triangle area. Radiance is really coming up big in this game tonight. Yeah, Torricci has been putting on a show here in this one on the receiving end of scores throwing assists she's done it all here for Raleigh as they continue to pour it on 20 to 9 is your score here in the fourth we got 225 remaining here in this one looks like the same line basically here for Atlanta punch one in get some new fresh players on and perhaps get a break and end and, and this one on here on a good note. Yeah, I think that's a strategy some coaches use when it's like, oh, we were trying to do this thing. We didn't, we mis mis executed it in one way or another. Let's try again. Um, so let's see if they can work their pull play, maybe look in that deep space. Liv Ford has been, has some beautiful deep throws. Mm -hmm. Haven't all connected tonight, but I love those passes. So maybe we'll see another one in this point. Yeah. Galaxy as well, with some excellent throws. Griner, Wilbur in the deep space. Now shot put up, looking to test Lindsey Sue. This one not able to be corralled in. No call down the field. Clean defense there from Raleigh. What a great matchup though, Popovich and Sue. I think that, I, I, I love that throw from Liv. You see how it's really a, th a thrower's wind, if anything out there, it's still kind of elevating as the receiver is coming to get it. And Popovich just doesn't quite get her hand on it. Sue doesn't quite get the deep, but Popovich, I think, with more experience, will make that play. Marietta fakes here on this near sideline. Finally, Sue cuts underneath and gets open. Wilbur playing center field defense, and so Sue is unmarked at the moment. But perhaps that's part of the plan. It looks like six people are playing person to person. Wilbur free to roam a little bit, now matching up on Sue as they go into the deep space. Raleigh having trouble getting it off this far sideline. And really? a stall called, great defense there for Atlanta as they get it back. Charlotte Dorn especially playing awesome, hardcore, physical D on that reset. Love that. A stall is actually my favorite kind of D because it's 
truly a team D, all seven people on the sideline and the sideline having a role in getting that D. Like the give and go action now, a deep shot put up in the space, blading. This one is caught for the block as we're under almost 40 seconds left to play here in the fourth quarter. So if you're Radiance, I think you're trying here to possess. You want this to be the last possession. You want to be in charge as things head into the fourth quarter, out of the fourth quarter. Now you can see a buzzer beater here, but you do not want Seoul to take possession again. Disc across the middle here, the Sioux as we approach 20 seconds left to play in this contest. Well, give and go actions, they work it past midfield. And they may elect to just hold it, even as the time expires. Now, blading deep shot, trust throw put up as we're approaching five seconds left on the clock. Two seconds, looking to get one up, over, and it's blocked in the end zone to end this one, folks. Your final in this one, Raleigh Radiance 20, Atlanta Soul 9. It's a great home opener tonight. Thanks to all the fans who tuned in on the live stream and all of the fans here sitting in the stands, on the track, around the edge of the football field. It's been a great night of Ultimate here in Atlanta. This live broadcast is brought to you by the Premier Ultimate League. The PUL is a 501c6 nonprofit. This league has been community funded since day one and we are so grateful for the support. We ask that you consider donating to help us continue to transform and fulfill our mission. Head to premierultimateleague.com to donate today. So your final in this one, the Raleigh Radiants come out on top 20 to nine here over your Atlanta soul. Any final thoughts on this one Miranda I think you know Raleigh had some stumbles in this game I think that they're probably a lot happier with this game than last week um, and that they are going to try and come hit DC with all they've got the next time they play them the soul I think they're building you know last week was a tough loss for them as well and they should be proud of so much that happened um, today and when they get their players from college sectionals who are missing tonight Quincy Booth Fiona Cashin Tons of great players that we would love to see build that chemistry with the players who are there tonight. I think they have a great shot going to Nashville on May 4th. So tune in to Nashville's stream um, on YouTube here as well. And then we'll be back on May 18th against Austin to see if they can steal one back from the torch to split games with Austin. This is the beginning of a nice long season for the soul. And I'm very optimistic moving forward. So your final in this one, the Raleigh Radiance 20, Atlanta Soul 9. On behalf of Miranda Knowles, I'm Ada Kaliande. So long here from Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs>